Yo, yo, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy GZTV. Before my final, I figured I'd get this video out to you guys so I don't have to worry about it later. Um, and yeah, we're talking about the 2015 American found footage horror film written, co-produced, and directed by M. Night Shyamalan, who's a pretty, become a pretty popular director, almost like cult following in horror in the last decade or so. Um, this is starring Olivia de Jong, Ed Oxenbold, Deanna Dunnigan, Peter McRobbie, and Catherine Hahn. So, yeah, we're going to get into it. We're going to do the plot, critical reception, kind of what I think of the movie. This is actually a really good movie, so let's go. I mean, there's a decent amount of the plot that I am going to spoil here because there's a decent amount of good twist here. There's a lot of intricate things that they do. It's not like a overly complicated movie. But they, do, they do a couple of things that catch you by surprise, so let's get into it. So, this movie follows two siblings from Philadelphia, Becca and Tyler, who prepare for a five-day visit with their grandparents while their divorced mother, Loretta, goes on a cruise with her boyfriend. You know, her, their mother's trying to live a life here, you know. Yeah, they're trying to just live a life here, and... Yeah, they're, they're, her kids are in support. Sorry, I'm kind of like choppy with my speech. I, I just woke up not too long ago, so yeah. So Loretta reveals that she has not spoken to her parents in 15 years after marrying her high school teacher, of whom her parents divorced or disapproved. It makes sense. I mean, why would you date someone that much older than you? You know, having never met their grandparents, the teens plan to record a documentary film about their visit using a camcorder because they... It's going to be mysterious, they don't know what to expect, and they have to record it. And obviously, uh, Becca's like a, a film person. She likes recording stuff. She has this camera, all that stuff. So Becca and Tyler meet their grandparents, referred to as Nana and Pop Pop, at a train station. So when they arrive at their isolated farmhouse, Becca and Tyler are instructed to never go into the basement because it contains mold. And that bedtime is at 9.30 every evening, after which they should not leave their room. It's really strange, man. I mean, you really don't understand them. Like, even after watching this film, you just don't understand the motive of these old people. Because <clears throat> trust me, they're not their Nana and Pop Pop. We're going to find that out. And that's kind of the twist that, again, if you haven't watched this movie, you should probably go watch it for. Because it's really interesting. I mean, it happens all the time. Like, stuff like that in movies where they twist it. You know? But, I don't know. So, although at first the grandparents seem pleasant, their behavior gradually becomes peculiar. Night, nightly, night after night after night, you know, it just gets worse. You know, they just start, and that's what's supposed to happen in a horror movie. It's supposed to kind of build up. This movie's pretty effective, you know. I think it's a, it's a pretty solid horror film, honestly. So the first night, an hour past curfew, Becca ventures downstairs for something to eat and sees Nana projectile vomiting. Which is like, okay, maybe she's just sick. I don't know. Like, at this moment, it's like, well, it's super weird. And obviously, when I was watching, I knew something weird was going to happen. Because I have core memories of seeing, like, the trailer for this movie. I'm like, oh, can you get in the oven to clean it? Like, that was a super iconic thing at the time. And I, it's so cool that I finally get to watch this movie. But yeah, so during the day, Nana chases the teens while they play hide and seek, and it's fucking creepy, like her hair's down in her face, she's like crawling under this thing, it's weird. So, later, Tyler finds a pile of soiled diapers in the shed, like someone had an accident a bunch of times, and we're thinking, well, I don't know, it could have been a baby, we, we don't know, you know, it, it's weird, it gets, it just keeps getting weirder, so... In town, Pop-Pop attacks a man he thinks is following them. Maybe he's getting... Well, now that you I watched the movie, maybe he was paranoid because he thought someone was, like, onto them or something. But, yeah. So when challenged, both grandparents are dismissive of each other's behavior. They're like, yeah, it's fine. We just have mental and physical conditions. We have some sort of diseases, each of us. Which isn't really normal, though. Like, yeah, I don't know. You can't just rub that off. So as the erratic behavior intensifies, Becca and Tyler's documentary-style film evolves into one of mystery-solving and evidence collection. It's really cool. I think I think found footage is utilized in this film super well, super effectively. So a woman, Nana, and Papa, 
Pop Pop helped in counseling brings a blueberry cobbler to thank them, but following a confrontation is not seen leaving. And this whole time we're like, why the hell did they... Why, why the hell... I don't know. What did they say in that conversation, I guess, was what the question was. Like, what were they talking about? And now that we watch it, it's like, oh, she was probably like, where the fuck are the the other the actual nana and pop pop where the fuck are those people at because those are the people i care about <laughs> it's, it's weird so concerned about the series of strange events tyler decides to secretly film the living room during the night but nana discovers the camera and tries unsuccessfully to break into the children's locked bedroom with a knife it's fucking creepy i mean there's a crazy jump scare here she's walking past and all of a sudden boom she pops up into the camera it's fucking creepy there are a couple jump scares. I mean, it, it doesn't get as bad in later in the film, but right there, it was crazy. That was like the peak horror. That was the peak, like, shitting your pants and watching the movie. So, yeah. So, upon watching the footage of Nana with the knife, Becca and Tyler video call Loretta and beg her to, to pick them up. She's like, okay, we're done. Like, these people, like, we, we were able to deal with it. We were able to tolerate it for a while, but now you need to pick us up. We need to get out of here. Like, this is bad, you know. So they use the laptop camera to show Loretta the odd behavior of her parents who are outside of the house. Um, upon seeing them, Loretta, distressed, finally realizes something. She finally comes up with a revelation and she identifies that the couple her children have been staying with are not their parents and that they most likely killed her parents and are keeping them as captive and probably going to murder them as well. We're not sure what the motive of these people are either. There's not really much of a motive, like a origin story. I think it would have been cool to see like a spinoff or some sort of like an origin, like a prequel to this film. We never got that. So here we are with the 2015. We're just left with this mat, this content, I guess. So yeah, realizing they have been staying with strangers, the teenagers try to escape the house and discover the visitor who went missing hanging from a tree. It's like, yeah. She was wondering where their actual grandparents were, so they decided to kill her as well, because she probably got suspicious. So the grandparents, now we got to put it in quotes, because they know they're not grandparents anymore. So the grandparents, whatever, find the children and force them to play Yahtzee. Great game, but obviously the children know their intent now. Later, Becca sneaks into the basement and finds the decomposed corpses of their real grandparents, along with uniforms from the psychiatric hospital in which they worked, revealing that their grandparents are actually escaped patients. It's really interesting. A lot of things tie in together here as you get to the end of the film. Um, Pop Pop grabs Becca and imprisons her in his bedroom with Nana, who tries to attack her in a psychotic fit. These people are not right in the head. It's not like they're trying to like creep the kids out. It's like, no, they're psychotic. Like There's something wrong with these people, genuinely. Yeah, so he then tortures Tyler by smearing his face with his dirty diaper, which is fucking disgusting. Following a struggle, Becca fatally stabs Nana with a glass shard from a broken mirror, then runs to the kitchen and attacks Pop Pop. It's just, Pop Pop. It's really interesting because they had this whole discussion, this interview that was super emotional about her like not looking at herself in the mirror. Now she like, closes her eyes, grabs a shard, and she uses a mirror to kill someone, uses a mirror to save the day. It's a really cool parallel they draw there. So as Pop Pop gains the upper hand, Tyler knocks him to the floor and kills him by repeatedly bashing his head with the refrigerator door. I mean, this kid just completely loses it. It's probably the most badass part of the film. It's like, yeah, you go, Tyler. You get his ass. It, it makes you feel so good. It's so satisfying. Uh, the teens escape outside where they are met by their mother and police officers. So now we get to the aftermath. Uh, Becca asks Loretta about what happened the day she left 15 years ago. I mean, I mean they need to get information. They're her kids. Like, they need to know the history of this. <laughs> so Loretta reflects that she had a major argument with her parents during which she hit her mother and was then struck by her father. So Loretta then left home and ignored their attempts to contact her. And there's a really dope like life lesson that comes with this movie. Loretta concludes that reconciliation was always possible had she wanted it. She tells Becca not to hold on to anger over her father's abandonment, and Becky decides, Becca decides to include footage of her father in their documentary effort earlier saying she would not do so. You can't keep holding on to anger. Like, it, 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 life is too short to hold grudges, and it's a really dope uh, little concept 
dope message that this mess or this movie sends with that. And obviously at the end with the credits, it was her brother rapping. That was kind of funny. Yeah, that's all I have to say about the plot. Let's get into the review. So getting into the review, there's a decent amount to talk amount of stuff to talk about. I mean, I think it's a really good movie, honestly. Um, some people don't like it, but I actually really like it. I mean, the visit provides horror fans with a satisfying blend of thrills and laughs. And also signals a welcome return to form for writer-director M. Night Shyamalan, which I haven't watched much of their movies. I don't know if it's a boy or a girl. I'm not going to assume over here. It is 2023. But, I, I don't know. I'm not really sure what, what gender they are, but I haven't seen much of their movies. I know that they made old. I really can't think of a whole lot of them, but yeah. Um... Some people say it's about average, but I think this is a B to A film. I mean, I think it's great. Uh, this is a deliciously creepy and funny little triumph um, for Shyamalan. The Visit is the one we've been waiting for, folks. I mean, it's good. Oh my, it's good. But more importantly, it is excellent in that specific way that reminds us why M. Night Shyamalan was once such a marvel. I mean, she had lost her, hit their stride. They had lost their stride for a little while. You know. It is richly humanistic, filled with individually sketched characters that often sparkle with wit and surprising decency. Uh, the film is an amusingly grim fairy tale. You know, Shyamalan has gone back to the basics with a stripped-down story and scale, a largely unknown excellent cast, and one of those classically tinged tales of child peril that has reliably spooked audiences for generations. Um, yeah, the film is a modern-day version of the fairy tale Hansel and Gretel. I mean, that's a lot of the... That's a lot of the comparisons that stem from it. It's like, yeah, it's just pretty much Hansel and Gretel. Um, yeah, let me see here. So, yeah, it, it's just a creepy thing, a creepy thing to think about. Um, there's people, some people don't like it, though. Um, is it meant to be a horror film or a comedy? I, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. There's jump scares here. The publicity calls it an original thriller, but it's neither of those things. I guess. I mean, only endurance test adequately describes the ill judged shenanigans that ensue. It was dull, derivative, and flatly unscary. I don't really care for people that negatively review this movie. I think it's great. I think it's not a perfect movie, but I think it's damn near close. I really enjoyed it. Probably one of the better horror films we've seen recently on the channel. But, uh, yeah, uh, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Today we're watching Lights Out, and that'll be reviewed. If you guys have been following me on the Scratch It, uh, Hush wasn't able to be covered, but hopefully at the end of the list I can just scra scratch that one out. Hopefully it gets put on some other platforms. But anyways, I'm out. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. I'm leaving in about 50 minutes to go to my final, so i got to get these clips together, post them for you guys, and yeah, probably do some packing. I'm out.